Welcome back, River Watchers, and happy May. Spring is in the air, the lake is greening up, and the high flow release experiment we covered last video just wrapped at Lake Powell. Are you ready to see how much of that water made it into Lake Mead? Let's go. Snowpack levels in April topped out on average around 160% of normal around the Colorado River Basin and its Rocky Mountain source. Water managers regard the start of April as the time that snowpack usually peaks, when spring temperatures begin to melt the existing snow faster than the new snow can accumulate. These high snowpack levels that kicked off 2023 are translating to an expected flow in the Colorado River this year that's 177% of normal. It has been a record-setting year for sure, folks meeting and in some places even exceeding the record levels from 1983 that went on to spill both the Glen Canyon and Hoover Dams. A snowpack specialist in Utah explains. We have never seen levels like this since we put in the snow tell system going back to 1980. We just beat 1983 as of midnight last night. Over in Las Vegas, home of Lake Mead, the heat has already started. And though our high level snow accumulation has been hanging around the spring mountain range, you can see throughout the month it has already begun disappearing as temperatures in the recent forecast nearly topped 100 degrees Fahrenheit already. Down at Lake Mead, we can now see the effects of the high flow release experiment from last video. Looking at the graph, we have this noticeable bump in the level that looks especially out of place this time of year compared to previous years. Mead is now showing 1,050 feet above sea level, or 29% full, up over three feet from last month's update. Upstream from Mead at Lake Powell, the level sits at 3,527 feet above sea level, or 24% full, up over 5 feet. This right here is the visualization of the high flow release from Powell to Mead, and we are now looking to intersect the level from last year on its way down, which was certainly not predicted by the USBR. Their previous projections showed Lake Mead dropping 20 feet over the course of 2023. Now, according to their new 24-month study just released, Lake Mead is projected to rise around 22 feet by October 1st, and Lake Powell is projected to rise a whopping 50 feet in elevation by the same date. Of course, to keep things in perspective, that would still leave Mead around 160 feet from full, and Powell 125 feet from full. So there is no chance of the water topping the spillways like it did in 83. That is still pretty incredible though considering the events of the last several years, and a direct result of the record-setting snowpack we so desperately needed to start the year. It also means that Lake Mead now has a new high level for the year, smashing the average predictions I made in February that were also based on the USBR's data. The irony is not lost on me that after blaming the hundred years of flawed river data used in the original compact, it still seems our modern day experts can't get the data right as we prepare to draft a new one. If there is one thing we can rely on, it's that Mother Nature and the Earth will always have a curveball ready. Now let's dig into the basin bin and take a look at the stories around the Colorado River Basin this month. We all know from the River Compact updates, the basin states are supposed to be working on water reduction plans to satisfy the USBR. Well, over in Arizona, it looks like they are nipping their usage problem in the bud, as we have news out of Phoenix that Arizona Attorney General Chris Mays announced that drill permits for a Saudi Arabian-owned alfalfa farm in La Paz County have been revoked. Two deepwater wells that were previously approved eight months ago for Fondamonte, Arizona, LLC, the Saudi-based exporter, which Mays calls unconscionable given the state's need to preserve water. For too long, our state leaders have been asleep at the wheel while this crisis has only grown, Mays said in a tweet. Well, with new state leadership and ever-increasing urgency of the issue, now is the time for the state government to get serious about regulating groundwater across Arizona. Not far from there in Tucson, Arizona, City leaders have agreed to leave more than a third of their water allotment from the Central Arizona Project in Lake Mead for this year, foregoing some 50,000 acre-feet in 2023, and up to 30,000 acre-feet annually in both 2024 and 2025. Tucson will be compensated by the USBR for leaving that water in the lake under a new federal water conservation program that provides drought relief money for the West, particularly the Colorado River Basin. How much money the city will be compensated for these agreements wasn't yet disclosed. Next door in Nevada, lawmakers are considering a first-of-its-kind legislation that will give water managers the authority to restrict the amount of water available for residential use. The proposed bill would make Nevada the first state to allow a water agency, the Southern Nevada Water Authority, to shut off water for single-family residences that use more than half an acre foot of water a year, roughly 163,000 gallons. 
bound to be controversial to many and deemed necessary by others, this is definitely a breakthrough attempt at advancing legal efforts to curb water use. This is much in contrast to what's happening over in California, however, as we can see in this article from France 24, California's desert farmers defend their river rights. I picked an international source because it's actually a bit hard to find a good unbiased reporting on the water rights situation there. The local media and reporters seem reluctant to cover it much. That's besides the point though. I wanted to highlight in this article here the farmer himself states, We average less than 2 inches or 5 centimeters of rainfall per year. So without the supply of the Colorado River water coming here, there would be no one living here, there'd be nothing being grown here, this would be a desert. Yet they are preparing to fight for the right to that water. I think that says it all. So as you can see, some basin states are taking big new approaches towards getting water use under control, while others seem to be holding fast to the old systems of usage and water rights until the end, which would be 2026, when the 100-year-old river compact of 1922 expires by default anyways. Meanwhile, the federal government isn't waiting around for the basin states to come to an agreement, which is looking less and less likely to happen regardless. Instead, they have been continuing to release their own proposals should we continue on the current course without resolution. A new plan that was just released by the USBR included a recommendation to bypass the Glen Canyon Dam at Lake Powell altogether. It's kind of like a last ditch Hail Mary attempt to save the power plant, said Gary Wachner, executive director of the nonprofit organization Save the Colorado. It makes no sense to manage the entire Colorado River system to generate electricity because you can generate electricity in all sorts of other ways. In the same reclamation proposal, the plan named Alternative 6 recommends investing in renewable energy to help nullify any losses from reduced hydropower production. This would mean using alternatives such as solar and wind to replace the dam generation. That bypass plan would mean the flow of the Colorado River through Glen Canyon would be somewhat restored to a natural level, and that Lake Powell, the reservoir itself, would dwindle to just a small pool of water. This would in turn greatly benefit Lake Mead, because Mead would become the single primary reservoir of the southwest, and water managers would not have to worry about maintaining levels in two separate reservoirs to generate power. Decommissioning the dam would also save money compared to tearing it down, or drilling holes near the foot, which has been previously suggested. Surprisingly enough, the plan to bypass the Glen Canyon Dam would now agree with not only the feds at the USBR, but also environmentalists like the Glen Canyon Institute. Historically, the Bureau has almost always been at odds with environmental groups. So what do you think? Is this a sign that maybe everyone can come to the table on something? Do you think it would be an eyesore to leave the towering Glen Canyon Dam sitting over a mostly empty reservoir? Or do you think it's a good idea to keep the dam in place in case of any unforeseen future flood events? Let us know in the comments below. We'd like to give special recognition to our Super Thanks users from last update. They are Steven Jackson and Mark Gagne. Your support helps us to free up the time needed to create more content as this is just a hobby squeezed into the ever shrinking free corners of our lives. Thank you for allowing us to make and share this content with you. Stay tuned as we track the rise of these reservoirs and we'll be sure to keep an eye on the river compact situation also and how the states are reacting along the way. Until next update, stay hydrated, stay happy out there, and take care. We'll see you next time.